Good morning, everyone. My name is Pastor Tiffany, and I am the pastor here at Cookstown and New Egypt. We are so excited to welcome you to our service this morning. If you are a regular attender or if you're new to us, please feel free to welcome each other in the comments and let us know you're here and say hello. Over the next few weeks, we will be diving into our sermon series called The Vine, and we will be looking at the Gospel of John, chapter 15, where Jesus tells us that he is the vine and we are the branches. But to get our service started, let us join together in song. My life is in you, Lord, my strength. opening prayer. The words will be on the screen. God of love, plant us in the soil of your grace. Nurture us with the strength of Christ, the vine of everlasting life. Enlighten us with the wisdom of your spirit, which flows through us today and all days. Abide in us that we may abide in you and live in your love. In your holy name we pray, amen. Hi friends, it's Miss Julie. I want you to sing along with me if you remember it. He's a peach of a savior. He's the apple of my eye. He prunes away my branches when my branches get too high. He bears fruit in all season and his love will never die. And that's why I'm bananas for the Lord. Glory, glory, we're the branches. Glory, glory, we're the branches. Glory, glory, we're the branches. And that's why I'm bananas for the Lord. Awesome! Great job if you sung along with me. Well, friends, just like this fruit needs to be connected to a tree in order to gain all its nutrients and to grow big and get yummy and sweet, we too have to be connected in order to be all that we can be. 
And so we need to be connected to God and he is going to help us and nurture us and help us to grow big and strong. And so what I want you to do is to keep learning all that you can about Jesus because that's the way that we can stay connected. Have a great week. Good morning, everyone. I'm so glad you're here as we dive into our sermon series, The Vine. Today, we're going to talk about life a little bit. And Ferris Bueller once said, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you'll miss it. Forrest Gump told us that his mama always said, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. I think we can all agree that life is hard and it has been extra hard since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic in March. It does move fast and we often don't know the outcome. Sometimes there are things we wish we could run from, things we wish we could change and things that we wish we never had to do again. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John chapter 15 verses 1 to 11, and I'm going to read this morning from the message version. So this might not sound exactly the way you may remember it if you've read it in other versions. It says, I am the vine, you are the branches. When you are joined with me and I with you, the relationship is intimate and organic. The harvest is sure to be abundant. Separated, you can't produce a thing. I've loved you the way my father has loved you. Make yourselves at home in my love. If you keep my commandments, you'll remain intimately at home in my love. That's what I've done, kept my father's commands and made myself at home in his love. I've told you these things for a purpose, that my joy might be your joy and that your joy wholly mature. Now, isn't that such a beautiful picture? We're joined with him, he's joined with us, and we can live together in love and experience his joy while also loving one another. Now, that sounds super simple, right? Didn't we just agree, though, that life is hard? Didn't we agree that sometimes there are things that don't have the outcome we're expecting? I can't speak for your experiences. I can only speak for mine. And I can tell you in my life that this hasn't always been true. Not that the Bible isn't true, just the truth about remaining in Christ, making myself at home in his love, experiencing his joy, wasn't always fully active in my life. I know I talked a little bit a couple weeks ago about my trip to the DR, the Dominican Republic, um, but I want to share a little bit more about that. It'll give you a, a little bit more insight into myself and some insight into the scripture. Uh, before that Dominican Republic trip, I felt like a completely different person. I looked a lot more like this passage from Galatians chapter 5 verses 19 through 21. It says, it's obvious what kind of life develops out of trying to get your own way all the time. Repetitive, loveless, cheap intimacy, a stinking accumulation of mental and emotional garbage, frenzied and joyless, grabs for happiness, trinket gods, magic show religion, paranoid loneliness, cutthroat competition, all consuming yet never satisfied once, a brutal temper, an impotence to love or be loved, divided homes, divided lives, small-minded, lopsided pursuits, the vicious habit of depersonalizing everyone into a rival, uncontrolled and uncontrollable addictions, ugly parodies of community. I could go on. Now, seven years prior to my 2017 trip to the DR, I was given the incredible gift of a liver transplant, and I know you've all heard me talk about that a little bit. But the day that that happened, my life changed, and you would think that it would have changed for the better. I would have felt amazing. I would have, you know, felt like I could run marathons, and in some ways, I did. But 
In other ways, not so much. I had really completely mentally checked out of my life. I don't really know what happened other than I think deep down I didn't really think that I was going to live. I didn't think I was going to make it out of that situation. And for years prior to transplant, my life had become a routine of appointments and doctor's visits and trying to make sure that my son grew up with as normal a childhood as possible. I forgot what it was like to live. And I mean really live. I was an emotional wreck. I knew God was there. I knew that I was a Christian, that he was part of my life, but I had kind of kept him at arm's length for quite some time. Did he still talk to me? Yeah. Did he still pursue me? Yeah. But I certainly wasn't living life to the fullest potential that God had for me. I had pursued all sorts of things to try and find that fulfillment. I tried acting. I tried singing lessons. I tried um, playwriting. I tried directing. I even opened a nonprofit theater company for a short time that was very successful but also not fulfilling and incredibly stressful. None of these things were inherently bad, but I just was doing life on my own. I knew that this was not the life God had called me to, and I had all this junk from years gone by that I had really let sit inside for far too long. That missions trip was a turning point for me. I had experienced the love of Jesus in such a real and tangible way that in that moment, I realized what it meant to become fully connected to the vine in a way that I had, hadn't been in a very long time. God met me on that trip and I was finally open enough to receive what he had always had for me. He showed me that the work was already done through Jesus on the cross. Now, on the way home, we watched, um, you know, you can watch movies in the plane. And I chose the Disney movie Moana. I don't know how many of you have seen it or how many of your grandkids have made you sit through it. But the Lord gave me such a clear um, object lesson for what this verse is about. And I'd like to share it with you. I'm not going to get into all the details about Moana other than she is tasked with the quest of bringing the heart back to the creator of life on the island. Tefiti, the island creator's heart was stolen. And when that happened, she became this ugly lava monster by the name of Taka. Here's a picture for reference of Taka. For close to seven years, I really felt like a monster it wasn't on the outside so much, but inside it just was like a burning pile of garbage that I allowed circumstances and people and things to rob me of life that God had already given me. A life that remains in Him, that's full of His love and His joy. At the end of the movie, and I wish I could show you a clip, but I can't without getting uh, taken down on YouTube. Moana brings back the heart of Tefiti. I'll actually link uh, a clip of that in the comments for you to watch later if you'd like. But when Moana brings back the heart, she sings this song towards Tefiti and calls her, calls um, her to her. And she says, I have crossed the horizon to find you. I know your name. They have stolen the heart from inside you, but this does not define you. This is not who you are. You know who you are, who you truly are. I wept on that plane in a way that I hadn't in a very long time. All that time I felt like I was walking around feeling like that monster. But God gently sang to me that song, that he died on the cross just to find me that these circumstances that I had went through in my life did not have to define who I am because God showed me who I am, who I truly was and who he created me to be. 
He created to me to be connected to that vine. And he created you all to be connected to that vine as well. To abide in God's love. To be connected to Jesus always. Jesus knows exactly who we are. He knows the life he has for us. And that life, like the passage in John says, is full of love and joy and peace and all those things that can only come from Jesus. Here's a picture of what Taka then turns into as Tefiti. When Moana gives her back her heart, the lava disappears and she becomes beautiful and lavish and lush. This, folks, this picture is what Christ has given to us in Jesus. What we can be when we remain in his love. Lavish, alive, blooming, spreading out to those around us. So I want to ask you this morning, how are you feeling? Do you feel like lava on the inside? Or do you feel lavish? Are you burnt or green? Are you rotten or are you blooming? What do you want your life to look like? Church, that passage is simple, yet so hard to fully grasp. But it starts with simply having a relationship with Jesus Christ, becoming connected to him in a way that maybe we haven't before. This type of relationship is more than just an hour on Sunday morning. This relationship is deeply woven. It's connected because if we are separated at all, we can't do anything. I don't have it all together. Just like Paul tells us in Philippians 3, 13. I'm not saying I have this all together or I have it made. But I am well on my way. Reaching out for Christ who so wondrously reached out to me. Friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in all of this. But I've got my eye on the goal. Where God is beckoning me onward to Jesus. And I'm off and running, and I'm not turning back. There are still days, friends, where my flesh looks like lava and it rears its ugly head. But we have to take each and every day, sometimes even minute by minute, and ask, am I remaining in Christ? Or am I trying to do this on my own? Is my reaction to people one of love and joy? even when the situation is hard. I want to close with this one last thought. In our passage from John, Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. When you are joined with me and I with you, the relationship is intimate and organic. The harvest is sure to be abundant. Separated, you can't produce a thing. Church separated, we can't produce a thing. Separated from Jesus, we can't produce anything, and separated from one another, well, that's something we're going to talk about next week quite a bit. We can't do life alone. We can try, but it is hard, and it is tiring, and it is certainly lonely. Be challenged and encouraged this morning that if you feel like you look like lava, you can change it right now. And if you are looking green and lush and blooming, then help those around you who are feeling like lava. Let our lives remain in Christ, making his home, making his love our home and experiencing his joy to the fullest extent. Next week, when we come back together, we're going to be looking at the next section of John chapter 15. And we're going to be talking about staying connected to the vine and what it means to stay connected and love each other well. All these things build upon themselves. 
but the first most important task is we must we must abide in Jesus Christ and if you're listening this morning and you say I don't have a relationship with Jesus that is a very simple thing to rectify all we need to do is pray together so let's do that God this morning we come to you God and we we ask that you would make your home in us Lord we acknowledge that we are sinners and sometimes we look more like lava than we'd like to that we don't always get it right but God we acknowledge that we need a Savior this morning and we ask that you would come and abide within us we ask that we would remain in you God help us as we take these next steps to remain in your love send people around us to help us as we begin our relationship with you new and afresh this morning in Jesus name amen this is the time we would normally give of our tithes and our offerings I say it every week and I will continue to say it thank you so very much for your gifts we appreciate each and every one of them and without you ministry could not continue if you would like to give you can give via the regular mail both of the addresses will be on the screen or you can also give to both churches via PayPal that information is on the screen as well as on our Facebook pages again we cannot thank you enough let us pray good and gracious God we thank you for your continued abundance to both Cookstown and New Egypt we thank you for each and every person who has given of their gifts uh, monetarily of their time of their resources of their talents God we thank you for all of those things and we just ask that you would continue to bless them to multiply them so that we can do your will and your service in our community in our church and in our world in Jesus name we pray amen Please keep in mind we will be welcoming everyone back to our buildings for in-person worship on August 23rd, 9.30 a.m. for Cookstown and 11 a.m. for New Egypt. You should have received information in the mail, and if you have not received it, please let me know and we will get that to you as soon as possible. We have teams at both churches working very hard to ensure everyone's health and safety. However, if you are a vulnerable individual either in your health or age or you're not comfortable venturing out just yet we will still be uploading our services for YouTube for you to participate in worship there there's no pressure to attend our in-person service just an opportunity remember that we are the church not the building and Jesus is with us wherever we are
Church, I hope you take some time over the next week to reflect on the things we talked about this morning. Ask yourselves, as you go throughout your day, am I connected to the vine? Am I abiding in Christ? Are my actions reflective of who he is? And remember that we're no good if we're detached from him. I pray that you have a blessed and wonderful week abiding in Jesus and that your joy may be full.